Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Bowling, along with Ebony K. Williams and Kat Timf. We are the Fox News specialists, and don't adjust your televisions. <laughs> this is a special live 11 p.m. Eastern edition of the Fox News specialists after dark. It's a big day of developments <laughs> for the Trump White House and the Trump Russia investigations. Donald Trump Jr. just responded to all the swirling accusations of Russian collusion with an extensive sit down on Hannity. And we are all over those comments with up to the minute analysis. So stick around for the full hour and you'll be more informed than Congress. <laughs> There's a lot for us to sink our teeth into. But first, we go live to the White House where Fox News correspondent Kristen Fisher is standing by with the very latest on the administration's reaction to today's developments. Kristen. Hey, Eric. Well, tonight, Donald Trump Jr. kind of admitted that, you know, in retrospect, he probably would have done things differently, but he insists that there is nothing there there. As for his father, the president, well, he is defending his son and his decision to release those emails. He calls it an act of transparency. But the problem is that act of transparency just handed over a ton of evidence to investigators both on Capitol Hill and in the special counsel's office. So here's the part of that email exchange that's probably going to cause the most problems for the White House. It's from Rob Goldstone, who is the British publicist who set up this whole meeting with Trump Jr. and this now infamous Russian attorney. Goldstone writes, quote, this is obviously very high level and sensitive information, but is part of Russia and its government support for Mr. Trump. He goes on to say that it, quote, would incriminate Hillary and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to your father. Well, Trump Jr. responded by saying, if it's what you say, I love it, especially later in the summer. Now, that has Democrats like Senator Tim Kaine using words like perjury and perhaps even treason. Even some Republican senators like Lindsey Graham are calling that email exchange very disturbing. But Donald Trump Jr. says that he simply viewed that meeting as routine opposition research and that his father knew nothing about it. Listen. Did you, do you tell your father anything about this? No. Uh, it was such a nothing. There was nothing to tell. I mean, I wouldn't have even remembered it until you start scouring through the stuff. It was, it was literally just a wasted 20 minutes, which was a shame. Well, now there are bipartisan calls for Donald Trump Jr. to appear on Capitol Hill and testify under oath. And tonight, he's agreed to cooperate. Eric, Kat, and Ebony? <laughs> Ebony, has a question? I do. Kristen, thanks so much. Uh, my question is around the Tim Kaine uh, statement around perjury, or at least the question of it. Uh, to your understanding, Kristen, is that a result of the denial that initially uh, Donald Trump Jr. gave around his meetings with the Russian uh, officials? Yeah, I think so. Remember, this has been a really evolving story over the last four days. Uh, it started with one defense and really has evolved to what we're now seeing. So I think that's where that perjury remark came from. But, you know, probably the, the real big question is, you know, is this collusion or is this simply an example of political inexperience? And that's really what a lot of Republicans are pointing to. But the problem with that assumption is that, you know, yes, Donald Trump Jr. is relatively politically inexperienced. So is uh, one of the other people that was in that meeting, his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. But Paul Manafort was the campaign manager at the time, and he is no political novice. He's been in this for decades. And a lot of folks here in Washington say tonight that he should have known better. Ebony? Kat? Yeah, you. I just wanted to ask, do you know anything about when we can expect to hear President Trump actually talk about this a little bit more, other than to say that <laughs> his son is, you know, a great guy? <laughs> You know, I think everybody would love to know when exactly we're going to hear from President Trump on this. He's been uh, unusually quiet the last few days. Granted, he's, you know, coming back from this, uh, his second foreign trip. Now he's about to leave tomorrow on his third foreign trip. So he does have a lot going on behind the scenes, but uh, he has been uh, perhaps a little unusually quiet and uh, hasn't been talking about this on Twitter as much as usual. And in fact, the only comment we got from him today was a one sentence line that we heard from uh, the deputy principal press secretary, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, where she said that, you know, the president applauds his son's transparency. That's about that's about it. And she also said that uh, he's just very frustrated by the fact that this is continuing to overshadow all the things that he'd like to accomplish on Capitol Hill. All right, Kristen, thank you very much. Now, let's sure. meet tonight's specialist. She's a pollster, a senior consultant for applied techno, techno 
economics. <laughs> I said that right. And a professor of political science and international studies at Iona College. But she specializes in polls and analysis. Jeannie Zeno is here. And he's a former White House correspondent who covered Ronald Reagan for The Washington Post, a columnist for The Hill, and is a co-host on The Five. And his specialty is, according to him, making me look good. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Williams is here. Let's kick uh, this one off with the, one of the big headlines from Sean Hannity's big interview with Donald Trump Jr. over whether he has any regrets about the meeting with the Russian lawyer Natalia Veselnitskaya last year. In retrospect, I probably would have done things a little differently. Again, this is before the Russia mania. This is before they were building it up in the press. For me, this was opposition research. They had something, you know, maybe concrete evidence to all the stories I'd been hearing about, but they were probably underreported for, you know, years, not just during the campaign. So I think I wanted to hear it out. But really, it, it went nowhere, and it was apparent that that wasn't what the meeting was actually about. All right, well, I'll start with you. If talking to a source was illegal or unethical, I'd say half the people in D.C. would be uh, in jail. And probably most of the media would, would be out of work. Well, this isn't just talking to a source, Eric. This is talking to someone who comes to you advertised as connected to the Russian government and with information that's been developed by the Russian government. So this, in essence, then, leads people to have questions about knowledge, foreknowledge. He certainly had knowledge. And then it comes to the issue of collusion that we've all been discussing for weeks. And it would seem at this point, then, that there, it's no longer a question of whether or not there was collusion. The real question tonight is, well, how much did President Trump know about this? Did he know about the meeting? Paul Manafort, his campaign manager, is in the meeting. His son-in-law, his trusted aide, Jared Kushner, is in the meeting. Did he know about it? And if he didn't know about it, what does that say? Yeah, Jeannie, I mean, Jeannie, is it White credible? House, the White House says that Trump, uh, <laughs> President Trump just learned about it a couple of days ago. So uh, if he didn't know about first of all... <laughs> Collusion for what end? To what end? And, and what, doesn't there have to be an exchange of, of an actual thing of value, of monetary value? Yeah, and let's remember, collusion itself is, is this was a faltered collusion, if it was anything, and, and it's not itself illegal. But the point is, is that, unfortunately, the president's son, and I think there was some malpractice here on Paul Manafort's part, because somebody has to be protecting the family in these campaigns, and Against that what, doesn't Jimmy? seem what? to you, have you, happened. You're allowed the, to meet with, with, with foreign nationals. This is are, not, not it's, Eric, it's not this illegal. is not straight opposition research. This is opposition research coming from one of our primary opponents in the world. This is Russia. We oppose Russia on almost every grounds. If a foreign come, if a foreign country comes to you with this type of information, you have an obligation to turn that over. And Paul Manafort knows that, and that should not. And I really feel like if the son didn't know, if Eric didn't know, this they should have been uh, informed by Paul. Right, let, let, let's bring it. Do you want to? You well, I just want to touch because I think Jeannie's touching on campaign finance law violations, right? Exactly. Okay. So, in which order is for... probably the only place where he could be accused of violating the law, except if well, it's Well, we'll get into it later. Way. Yeah, but but let's start with this one because I think it's an important one. It's really top of mind for a lot of Americans tonight. So, one of the things that's required for us to broach that, Eric, is going to be an exchange of something of value. So we cannot accept or solicit things of value. So the big question is going to be this opposition it, it research is that valuable but, but, and that's going to be up to the trier of facts if that's um mm -hmm. the standard you're going to go by mm -hmm. literally Poison anything could have value i mean if you go up to a campaign and say hey i think if you go over there there's a you know there's a good voting block over there you might want to talk well, i think to. people that are split be on it because value. there hasn't really been a case like this before evity has there where it's always been about money, and that's the way people have looked at it. They've never looked at it in terms of a conversation. Well, so nobody I, I, really I knows what to think. I don't know if we've never seen that cap. It's certainly not necessarily when the stakes in have this been context, this high in this context. Right. And, and also, the trier effect will also, determine that. When this meeting actually took place, there was, in fact, nothing of value exchanged. She had nothing. Right, right, right. But I think, again, the intention, the intention matters. The intention. Be. And let me just well, say, listen, <laughs> let me tell you, if, I, if I intend to speed, yet I still do the speed limit, and I know I'm thinking about That's speed. That's not even close to the same thing. Not, but, but, not but, even close. But I, it's, it's, stri <laughs> it's striking to me that we have, until this point, until the New York Times forced uh, Donald Trump Jr.'s hand, we were all debating, well, you know, where's the smoking gun? What's to come? And it looks to so many people, especially those on the left, but I think even inside the White House, like, Oh my God, this is not good. Speaking this is a, what, this is chaos. God has to shoot and no, right? no, no. And let me just finish up on this point because you guys were discussing this. Remember that back in 2000 in the Gore campaign, mm -hmm. 
Somebody actually sent some information, opposition research, to the Gore campaign. And what was their reaction? Their reaction was to take it directly to the FBI. Right. We don't even know that that came from a foreign nation and certainly not an adversary, but that was the correct and, uh, uh, response. That's the appropriate get... response, especially when we're talking about a hostile, not just a foreign nation, but a uh, hostile foreign actor. This, I was uh, saying Donald it, Trump's uh, junior's defense, real quick, Eric, that he did say if something had materialized, that he would well, have. Well, we don't know yet. We this, don't know. This one, you've been around a very long time. You know this goes on. All, not, not that, as Kat pointed out, in the 5 o'clock hour, two wrongs don't make a right, but these are things that go on in campaigns nonstop. I'm going to talk about this. We'll talk about it later, but just remember, Alexandra Chalupa. Just remember that name. We're going to get to it in the next block or maybe later in the show. It's relevant. It's material. Trump Jr. also explained why he was not particularly alarmed at the approach for this meeting with the Russian lawyer at the time. This was 13 months ago before I think the rest of the world was uh, talking about that, trying to build up this narrative about Russia. So I don't even think my sirens you know, went up or the antennas went up. At yep. this time, because of it, because it wasn't the issue that it's been made out to be over the last, you know, nine months, ten months, uh, since it really became a thing. So I think there is an element of context to that. At the time, it wasn't this big news story. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. And we talked about that just a couple of days ago uh, on the 5 o'clock show, Eric, because Russia now, the black is hot, right? The black is really, really hot when it comes to Russia, and everything feels very alarmist. But we go back a year, which is when this meeting took place last summer. Russia didn't necessarily have that cloud over it in the way that it does today. So I can somewhat hear where he's coming that, from that. Okay, but also at the same time, you don't have to have been involved in this forever to see that if something's coming from a hostile foreign actor or they're, a, they're trying to present themselves as a hostile foreign actor, they said this was a government lawyer, you don't just think, oh, whatever. You, that sh would raise alarm bells for anyone, I would think. If I got an email like that, I don't know, is everyone else getting emails like that but No, me? but every, maybe every other single senator and congressman does get an email at some point saying, hey, will you meet with this Russian uh, foreign minister or uh, representative of Russia? That is very, very of common. Of course that and is. And it I'm doesn't not, mean I'm that not... collusion is happening at every level of our government. And I'm not saying that either. All I'm saying is if they're saying, hey, we have this information on someone who was a top official in your government that we have through our official government research to try to help take down this person, you might stop and think, whoa, before you think, yeah. Well, let me, let me just but... react to what uh, we heard from Eric Jr. a moment ago, which was a terrific interview. I, I'm very impressed. I thought Sean Hannity was going to be a whole lot nicer. I thought Sean went right at him. And, but let me just say this, and this is in response to what Ebony was saying. You know what? He's had several months since he knew Russia was hot to say, oh, yeah, I had a meeting mm -hmm. with as someone who was sold to me as having information coming directly from the Russian government. Agreed. That's he didn't what say I a word. Again. And guess what? It's also a problem for Jared Kushner there was no, because Jared Kushner didn't put this was, on his disclosure well, form for his clearance. There was no information exchange, though. Why would he do I don't that? know, Eric. In March, that, in March I don't, Eric. But wait, wait. But on the other hand, Hillary Clinton did okay. get information from okay. uh, a, a foreign national. I had Russian a comment put, about look, the Trump. I'm asking, allow me. Just let me answer, <laughs> ask one this question. Hillary Clinton did do that. She, did, did what? she approached the Christopher Steele, the British foreign national, who put together a Russian dossier on she Donald Trump. She approached, no, I, I think Fusion, Fusion, which was which is Steel, opposition research yeah, group but that, that everybody used. Opposition research is commonplace in American campaigning. Right. What is distinctive what, here? What? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm asking you, what's distinctive about Donald Trump? I'm going to tell you. The denial. What, what she the did. Denial. Because you have here a foreign government seeking to interfere in American election process yeah. in our democracy. Can we just be very clear? Opposition research coming from the Russian government is not what is standard practice in U.S. <laughs> no, campaigning. No, 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 no. This is our enemy. We are opposed to them in Syria. We are opposed to them in Ukraine. They're not even supporting us in North Korea. This is an enemy of the United States, a foreign power. Imagine if Hillary Clinton so she, had done that. She did. No, she, no, she did. did not. Yes, that's the point I'm trying <laughs> to make. No, no. This, this is different. Steele and just because this didn't work dossier, out doesn't make it better. A dossier that was given to them by Sebastian <laughs> Steele by the Russian people, the government. This is completely different. He received an email saying, we are, we are active in your elections. Russia cannot interfere in a democratic election you're, you're, you're in the United the States. Is that that's what the email said. 
He shows up, and what do they get? They get a, a discussion of adoption. Correct, but here's the issue. I hear where you're coming yeah. from, Jeannie, but you are putting a very, I think, sophisticated political lens on it, right? And, and certainly we can all appreciate that. But if we t give him the benefit of the doubt, and I'm not saying I am, but let's just play the scenario out. We say Donald Trump Jr. doesn't really understand that level of sophistication. He just says, opposition research, classic commonplace politics. They're coming from my father. We might have a contested primary here. I'm kind of desperate. I'll go to whatever lens to get whatever opposition research. Maybe he puts himself in that position. And where is Paul Manafort then saying, oh, this well, is no, not no standard practice? I don't, I don't think and you need I to be a genius to think twice about an email like that. I don't think you need to be from a political family to think twice about an email like that. I think you need to be a human who pays a little bit of attention to think twice. Okay, we'll leave it right there. More reaction to Donald Trump Jr.'s interview with Sean Hannity, which just aired on this very special live edition of the Fox News Specialist, After Dark, coming up. Obviously, Robert Mueller announced earlier tonight he's going to be looking into it. You said in a tweet you would fully cooperate with any investigation. Of course. Completely. 100%. Turn over everything that they want, and you feel you already have. I believe, yes, sir. Yeah, and you have nothing to hide. You want to be, and that means you'll testify under oath, all of that. All of it. Welcome back to our special live late edition of the Fox News Specialists. That's Donald Trump Jr. telling Sean Hannity a short time ago he'll fully cooperate with Robert Mueller's special counsel investigation. Is that the wise legal strategy for him at this point? I would say cooperating with an investigation is wise, Eric. What do you think? So, so I mentioned um, Alexandra Chalupa in the last block. I want to just give you what this is all about. She's a, she's a, it was a DNC operative who worked in the Clinton White House, who also worked with the Ukrainian government last year to do opposition research on the Trump campaign people who turned it over, which, was, which resulted in Paul Manafort resigning because he didn't want the optics of, of what, she was, what, what she was bringing to the table. Now, this is someone who worked directly with Clinton, acquiring opposition research against Trump. So what happened here? What did Donald Trump exactly do with this lawyer? Nothing. They got nothing. The Clintons, however, did get something and they used it. So there's a lot being made of this meeting with Donald Trump Jr. And I think what you really need to do is go back and find out what the Clintons did. So, Eric, I I'll say this. The whether or not he got something from the meeting or not actually doesn't really matter, right? It's actually the front end that matters most from a legal context. Now, are you sure? Yes. So are one of the sure? positive. Here's here's why I know that because one of the elements agreement. Because they didn't break any laws. Well, I, can, all right, we, can, we, can we? Can we? I'm gonna I'm I'm back into it. I'm gonna back right. into a conclusion. Right. So one of the first things we have to get to is an agreement, right? So there has to be an agreement between the Trump campaigns, whether that's Manafort or in this case Donald Trump Jr. and the Russians. I don't think we have that. So I don't think that there's an agreement. What we have, and we'll get to it later in the show, we'll put up the screenshot, is Donald Trump Jr. saying he's agreeing to a meeting, but he doesn't know the context of which it's going to be at some point, right? Eventually, he's told this for opposition research, but we never have an agreement where he's saying, I'm agreeing to go in cahoots, so to speak, in, in some type of uh, collaborative effort with the Russians to undermine the U.S. election. And I think absent that, I'm finding short of collusion, but that's up to a trier of fact, Eric. But collusion is not illegal either, by the way. Not so we've moved from Not no always. evidence of collusion okay. to even if there is collusion, it's fine. Look, what I don't understand is why he is, this is, as Juan pointed out, why is this just all coming out now? Being transparent would be coming out earlier. In March, he said that, did I meet with people that were Russian? I'm sure. I'm sure I did. But none that were set up. This one was obviously set up. Then he said, none I can think of at the moment. So that kind of qualifies it. But then he says, and certainly none that I was representing the campaign in any way, shape or form. Some people might think that bringing a campaign boss with you to a meeting makes it look like you might be representing the campaign in some way, shape or form. Some people might think that. Let's just let's just say that. Why? If you wanted to be transparent, would he not just say in March simply, yeah, I had some meetings, but nothing illegal and leave it at that. Why give these specific designations? When really, this is the reality. That's the thing I have a problem with. I, I'm not some crazy partisan hack on either side. When I see anybody changing their story, I ask questions, regardless uh, but, of whose but side to they're what on. End, Kat, to what end? So he thought he was going to meet with this uh, lawyer to find some opposition research. It ended up being about adoption. Nothing came of it. So, so why should he have to go and say, hey, I met with a lawyer about adoption? This That's wasn't about adoption. You know, I, this is it such was. a foul. That's it's what not it about. No, no, no. Let's just be clear. The adoption thing is something that's being used by Vladimir Putin quite intentionally 
to gain leverage because he doesn't like the sanctions being imposed right, by right, the U.S. government. Right, right, and he decided right, right. part of the way to go at this with the American people was to say, hey, you're being held back from adopting Russian children. There's, it's a child. There's no problem here. But he's really trying to undo the imposition of sanctions by the United States of America. She said she and didn't represent the Russian people. Oh, the yeah. She, look, there's she no question. She, yeah. in the email, she says, or that whoever is selling her to Donald Trump Jr. says, yeah, she that, has that, information that wacky developed by music promoter. I'm just, right, that. so why would he agree to that? But let me just say, the larger point, this comes to what the three of you have just been talking about, is it seems to me now there's a pattern here. And this, you know, you heard Sean Hannity ask Eric, I'm sorry, Donald oh, Jr., <laughs> about whether or not he'll cooperate with Robert Mueller. He says he's going to cooperate. Well, if I'm Robert Mueller and I'm looking in tonight and I'm watching the Hannity show, I'm watching Donald Jr., I'm saying, well, there's Donald Jr. You heard Ebony talk about Paul Manafort, who knows the law, knows the deal. And I'm also thinking, we, wait a second, Jared didn't disclose this on his form. That's the problem, the failure uh, right? to disclose. And I mean, then I'm the thinking, problem. I'm also thinking about yeah. Jeff Sessions, the attorney general. He had to recuse himself because he didn't admit that he had some meetings. What about Mike Cohen? What about Paul Manafort? Mike what Clay. about Carter Page? What about this guy, Peter Smith, the Wall Street Journal reported on, who was acting and saying, the, I've got the, information? Those are separate investigations. Oh, and, I think and, if and, I... And I'm guessing those are going to end up being open. But, yeah. but, uh, but again, what, has been, what law has been broken? None. What <laughs> ethical violation has been uh, <laughs> exceeded? None she that didn't I like can weigh in quickly on that. <laughs> well, I, I happen to agree. I don't think there is evidence yet. And I have been saying a long time, and we talked about this before, we should all take a step back and wait for Robert Mueller to do the investigation on the legal end of things. And I don't think there's any evidence tonight that Donald Trump Jr. did anything illegal to Ebony's point. There is a huge political problem and something of amnesia in the White House yeah. with these Russian connections. And that's where I applaud the president's son tonight for saying he's going to be transparent. We need more of that so the American public can get back to the business of what we need to do. Health care, immigration, tax reform, and how stop this drip drip on the Russia investigation. Final point on that. Totally agree with everything you said, Jeannie. And also, Eric, I agree we don't have any smoking gun yet. I think that that is still outstanding. But the cumulative effect of all of these parts, I know it, it yes. doesn't... Uh, Politically speaking, it matters. That's all. Legally, I'm with you 100. percent But politically speaking, the consequences are growing. Even though every, every campaign does it, including Hillary. Oh, Clinton. No. okay. Okay. Right. Everybody, I, I, don't I, go. We have a lot more to talk about. Clearly, <laughs> on this live late night edition of the Fox News Specialist. Stay right there. You're unbelievable. I think the reason we fought so hard uh, during this campaign, whether it was my father and the work that he put into it, whether it was the rest of our family and the efforts that we put into it, and you know those efforts well, it's because we'd do anything for this country. So we're never going to put that in jeopardy, ever. So all right, we're back with more analysis on Sean Hannity's exclusive interview with Donald Trump Jr. And we're joined by our specialists tonight, Juan Williams and Jeannie Zeno. So will Americans agree with the statement that Trump Jr. made in that bite that we just played about not putting the country in jeopardy. Now, I want to say this. At the end of the interview, Eric, we saw, saw the attorney, Jay Sucklow, talk mm -hmm. about, you know, what is the legal uh, question? What law supposedly did Donald Trump Jr. break? And I think that's a fair question. So I want to kind of break down it. the statute that I've identified as, as one that possibly could be in play. And we talk about collusion generally, but specifically, let's get specific, it's conspiracy to defraud the U.S. And we're talking about 18 U.S. Code 371. And that's those elements of, of agreement, deception, defrauding, and kind of some of those more specific things. And I agree, Eric, we don't have that yet. But that's along the lines that we'd be looking if it's going to get to a place of legal collusion. Over a conversation with a lawyer who wanted to talk about adoption. Well, oh. I, oh, no, 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 I, I think I know, about, I, I, I know, I know, you know that growing, an over, but, over but I, I think I've solved the mystery of why this is such a big story. This one specifically, the mains, the liberal mainstream media is so invested in their Russian narrative and they keep investing more and the returns have been zero one. The return on investment has been zero. So they'll continue to try because they're so they're already all in. They're jumping all into the deep end of the pool, but they keep getting getting nothing out of it. So they got to keep trying, Eric, looking for something. I yes. completely yeah. agree that many in the 
mainstream media have it out for Trump. I completely agree with that. I completely agree that they get excited when they see something against Trump. But that doesn't mean that every single thing that comes out about him or his family that might be concerning is nothing to be concerned about. Those aren't two mutually exclusive things. Well, what happened to Comey? Well, a week ago or two weeks ago, we, oh, my God, this Comey thing is going to blow Trump administration out of the water. Well, that went away because we have this new thing that they've so, led. That so, Eric, their can we have two things? Can we have a, a gross overreaction time and time again from yes. certain people mm -hmm. obsessed with looking for something? Mm -hmm. And we also have even Donald Trump Jr. admitting if he had it to do over again, he'd do it differently because maybe there was a better way to do this. Maybe you disclose the meeting. Maybe you be general about the substance of it. But you let people know at some point I, I took some meetings with some Russians. And do you think the media is not hyperventilating? Gina, we'll throw it to Gina. But do you think they're not hyperventilating when they when they use the words Treason in relationship crazy. to this discussion that he had that went nowhere with the Russian lawyer. Treason, really? Yeah. I mean, the media hyperventilates over everything, though. You know that. But let's be clear. Part of the reason this is a story is because very early on, the Trump administration, for whatever reason, has not fully disclosed these meetings. This is a drip, drip that unfortunately we're going to see. And to, to your introduction, I would just say, I don't think many Americans even care. They will wait for Robert Mueller to come out. We've seen this in almost every scandal. Go back and look at Bill Clinton's scandal. People didn't pay attention outside of Washington until there were real charges. Of impeachment. People want the government to focus on the business of the people, and that's not happening, to your point. But that doesn't mean that the Trump administration should be allowing this to happen. Get them all in a room, disclose, and let's be done with it. Let me just make a point about it where I think this is going, because what we heard from Donald Trump Jr. there was a suggestion that, you know, what the American people understand it, and maybe it's the left-wing media, as Eric Bowling suggests. But, you know, I think a lot of people who are Republicans now are starting to think, hey, something's going on here, and it's potentially damaging to our party and, you have any and to this White House. Sure. John Cornyn, John okay. Cornyn okay. in the Senate now says that what you have here is a young man who's made himself a witness. He's got to come up now and testify about this meeting. He's put Jared Kushner in jeopardy because Kushner didn't disclose the meeting. I'm guessing in Trump, addition uh, to uh, which, John McCain you, and hang Lee on, Graham, no, no, you're just, you just, you just like people who you would describe as, you know, rhinos, rhinos right? But <laughs> what about people like Charles Krauthammer who says, hey, you know what, we have an epidemic of amnesia when it comes to meetings with Russians all of a sudden. What about people like Ari Fleischer who says, yeah, you want opposition research, but Ari, not from Ari. the Russian another government. One. Another one. Another. You like, oh. love Ari, but he's, he hasn't been exactly a pro-Trump voice. We've had him on you the show. You are splitting here's, the, the Republican Party is about. largely here's behind Donald Trump, about. Eric. Well, Non-partisanly answer this question. Sure. If what Donald Trump Jr. did, it can be construed as some sort of collusion or whatnot. Won't every single congressman and, and senator, most of them in D.C., be under the same uh, uh, accusatory veil as Donald Trump Jr.? They all meet with Russians. All of them. They should meet with Russians, but they're not well, running a campaign. Trump then he was in. Nor is, he was. Nor was Trump Jr. He was a central actor in his father's campaign, and he responds to an email that says, "Here's information intended to interfere in the campaign provided by the Russian government. Come to the meeting." And he brings the campaign chairman. And with that, we're going to wrap and take a very quick break. But so we've got a lot more to say. It's time for Eric to do a shotgun of Red Bull. But with that, <laughs> we will be right back. <laughs> And I think the mainstream media has probably done themselves, you know, a pretty big disservice by going so far, by going so extreme, by being so sensational. Uh, and, and I think it's pushing regular people away because they, they want to see what my father campaigned on. They want to see jobs. They want to see the numbers that he's putting up. You know, the stock market keeps breaking hits. We have the all-time highest employment in the country in terms of overall numbers. All these things, you know, that he promised he would do, they're happening. They're actually happening. And that's not getting any coverage. And that's a real shame. That's a real disservice to the people of this country. All right, let's continue the conversation on this live after dark edition of the Fox News Specialist. Now, Jeannie, What's your reaction to what Trump Jr. said about the media in that soundbite we just played? I agree with him completely in that soundbite that people want 
the administration and the government as a whole. Democrats and Republicans get back to the business of the people. The one thing I would add that he missed is that they are complicit in distracting people from that. And that's the frustration for Republicans as well who are watching this and saying this constant drip of these stories is problematic. They have to get the information out and they need to then stop talking about it let Bob Mueller do his job and get back to the business of governing. I didn't understand, for instance, the president's tweet on Russia as he came back from the trip. It's these kinds of things that distract from the business of the people that should be going on. The president's got a lot on his plate. Let Bob Mueller do the investigation, get this information out and move on. You know, we haven't heard that 153 million people are now employed in America, the most ever, all time Brand new record. You wouldn't know that because if you listen to mainstream media, it's all about a meeting between so this uh, Trump is, um, Jr. and a, a lawyer. I think that there's way too much attention to that as well, Eric. This is what I would advise the president to do. I would literally not tweet a single thing about Russia for until Mueller comes out with a, a, something concrete. Every tweet I would have from Donald J. Trump, POTUS's uh, Twitter account, would be about jobs, would be about the economy, would be about whatever's going on and with national security and those issues. That's what I would do. I would stranglehold the narrative. That wouldn't be very much fun, though, would it? <laughs> Too much also, like right. tonight, no surprise that Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who's been calling for the impeachment of Donald Trump for months, said on Twitter this evening, quote, at this point, the New York Times could release Trump leaving a voice message thanking Putin for his services, and GOP would still say nothing burger. Really, Congressman? Uh, Kat, your thoughts? You, you may agree with some of that. So you're saying you would have a problem with it, Eric, if there was a voicemail? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying um, that President Trump you, there are saying people who would Putin. agree that there are people who will, who will excuse everything. I'm just saying there's, there's no collusion here. I think that there are people that will excuse everything. I also think that Maxine Waters is someone who's been calling for impeachment over everything. And it makes me very frustrated that those seem to be largely the main two groups of people out there without much room for individual thought in the middle. We have, I, Ebony's been on both sides of that. You know, sure. she, there are certain issues that you'll, you'll take the Trump yeah, side. Yeah, absolutely. You'll push, push back again. I have yeah, been that way also. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes you have. <laughs> all right, all right. Juan, your thoughts on uh, Maxine Waters saying that it doesn't matter what he does, Donald Trump, the GOP will, will excuse it. Well, this is what I was saying to you earlier. When you look at the numbers, the polls are overwhelming. Donald Trump still has tremendous support. It's close to 80 percent. Maybe it's over 80 percent of Republicans back this president, despite the drip, drip, drip that we've heard described, despite all the problems. You know, you think about people like Sean Hannity, who did the interview tonight. You think about the leading talk show hosts, Rush Limbaugh, Mark Levin, all these other guys. They are still solidly with Donald Trump. You look at the U.S. Congress today, you had major players, Mitch McConnell and others, Tom Cotton, people who you would expect would have some response, who went silent or said, you know what, let's hold off. And then, of course, you had the reaction on the Internet, which was to say, oh, wait a second, he busted the New York Times. Donald Trump Jr. just blew the New York Times away because he was transparent and he put out the emails. This is a defense, in my mind, that invites people to say, uh, are Republicans blind? Well, you know what? Let me let me say this one. I hear what you're saying, and I agree substantively. But let's talk politically speaking. Many people would say that the Republican Party, the establishment of the Republican Party, owes a whole lot to Donald Trump. That that their yeah. efforts to get into the White House were moot and and didn't get him there. So maybe that's why we're not hearing uh, very much from them at this point. Is they understand they're, they're playing their position. And they're staying in their lane, and they know they don't really have a lot of political leverage to play on this president. Well, the question is, come to 2018 mm -hmm. midterms. When Democrats start to lambast this president uh, in those campaigns, is the Republican brand damaged with independents and uh, Republican-leaning Democrats? Because what you see is the president's approval ratings very low. Right no, and see, the, and I was hoping you would say that. Rasmussen had him above 52 per 53 percent. Let's look at let's look at the real clear politics average oh, or Gallup. No, they have you don't want to look at the polls. Oh, now they want to. Guys, no polls don't matter. What are y'all talking matter. about? The polls. What about what about the New York Post headline tomorrow about you know in the editorial? It's a editorial, conservative paper. Editorial. A conservative paper New York saying. Post is editorial. Is a uh, is a uh, conservative. The, the New York Post? <laughs> Holy smoke. You know what? I'm going to stop right there. I, I, I quit. I quit. I quit. 
All right, more of this very special live edition of the Fox News Specialist After Dark, right after this, post not listening, I hope. We do in business. If there's information out there, you want it, and then you make what you do with it. If there was something that came from it that was shady, if it was a danger to national security, I would obviously bring it right to someone, but I didn't know what anything was. It turns out it was nothing, and therefore there's nothing to be able to actually talk about. More now on this late night edition of the Fox News Specialists with reaction to Donald Trump Jr.'s exclusive interview with Sean Hannity. You heard what Trump Jr. just said about this Russia meeting and that it's similar to the sorts of meetings done in business. But does that apply here? What do you think, Eric? Well, I, again, I, I'll, I'll repeat it. I, there, was no, there was nothing illegal. It doesn't look like okay, this happens 100, 100 times a day in D.C. A, a Russian business person or representative of the government wants to meet with one of our business people or representative of our, our government, and there's no collusion, there's no investigation. We'd be wasting billions upon billions of dollars and Robert Mueller's time if we investigated every time a politician from the United States met with a Russian official. And can, can I just say that I am very sensitive to the position that Donald Trump Jr. found himself in. And I will say that I teach campaign management. One of the things campaign managers are supposed to do is protect the family of the candidate. And to me, that there was a problem here. This is not somebody who is familiar with campaigns. He said it himself. And so while I don't think that that meeting should have ever occurred, I am sensitive to the fact that somebody should have been protecting the family. And I have to but, say but they're that not politicians but, either. They're, they're, you really well, but Paul Manafort is a campaign Paul. manager of, of, you know, a phenomenal campaign manager of many decades. Somebody should have been protecting the family. And I'm not saying that excuses the meeting, but I do think there should be some sensitivity. So to let that. me ask you a question, guys. If Huma Abedin or Chelsea Clinton had said yes to an email that came from somebody overseas, let's say the Chinese, uh, who are not our friends in many cases, and said, we have information on Donald Trump and we want to have a meeting and talk about it, what would your reaction be they, at this moment? You guys would they go ballistic. It. Again, I'll talk to about Christopher Steele, who put together the Russian dossier. Oh, you don't want to answer the question. To the you don't want to answer, because you know it's that this, if the shoe was on the other foot, you guys would be kicking high heels and saying this is evidence of how Democrats... I mean, how often does this happen, where someone says, I got information on your opponent? And but it, just because it, 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 it if it's a not illegal and, and be common practice what are we wasting but there's a different i mean i was going to say using drugs is common practice that doesn't mean no, it's that's illegal, illegal. That's, that's, that's my point that's my point exactly but nothing Sometimes. will happen here that's the difference <laughs> if something you know you know i'm going to go there Bowling, you already know that. All That's right. hilarious. I'll give you that. And this, this specific <laughs> thing from everyone that I've heard who knows more about the issue than I do, this very specific sort of meeting is not ordinary. It's not an ordinary thing. That's not normal opposition research. Am I, am, I, you're I, I, absolutely I, right. It's coming from a foreign government. And I think the big it question wasn't, is... They but, and I know, you're going to say that. It, it was and, just and, some bozo music promoter. She's real, real Eric. She's real. She's, 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 real. <laughs> she's <laughs> not imagined. But yeah. she's not part of the Russian government, nor did she represent. Oh, Remember this word? Yes, One she word. is. Yet. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say, the one thing that's moved on in the story today is I think that no longer can defenders say, oh, no evidence of any collusion. That email trail, that suggests collusion. I will say this. I'll put a human element on it. Uh, if, if my mother was running for president of the United States and someone sent me a note, I don't really care where they're from. I'll be completely honest with y'all. And they said that they had some some evidence or some some material thing that could make her likelihood better of getting elected. I would likely probably go. I'm just going to be straight I would up. definitely tell my mom, though, if a, someone said it was the Russian Oops. government that had secrets. And I would definitely, she would say, don't do that, Kat. That's Not an my idiotic mom. She's move. like, girl, go get it. But he said he didn't tell, he didn't tell his daddy. Yeah, he didn't tell, right. Right, didn't tell. When we return, we'll circle back with our specialists, Jeannie Zeno and Juan Williams. Stop the boss.
Matrix. All right, it's time to circle back with our specialist, Jeannie Zeno and Juan Williams. Juan, I'm going to throw it to you. Here How does it feel to be up uh, this late, my friend? You know, at my age, this is not good. <laughs> not good. Not good. Well, you so, hung real tough. Well, I appreciate it because, yeah. you know, I mean, I like hanging with the young people. <laughs> so, Juan, I'm carrying a taste of, of what it's like to be Juan Williams in the five today. <laughs> four, kind of a four is that right? You felt that way? I felt like, because I I, they brother. asked me to come over and I said, I'm going to help Eric look good on this. You know, <laughs> obviously, Sean looked good tonight. Good interview. But I wanted you to look good, you know. Pump yeah, you up, my you. friend. Got my back. <laughs> Especially when you're taking down all my arguments. Right? No, that's all right. That's all right because you know what? This is your show, Eric Bowen. You get to do it along with Ebony and Kat. Yeah. And I honor, I'm honored to be invited. No, oh, good times, good times. Jeannie, I was going to ask you, where do you see this story going tomorrow in the next in the next few days? Anywhere? I'd like to talk about other stuff tomorrow. <laughs> Thank I would you, love Kat. to talk me about other too. stuff tomorrow, personally. <laughs> Yeah, me too. I think we're probably going to see more of a drip, drip. I hope that's not the case. Oh, we come really on. have to move on. <laughs> Do you think that's crazy? Why? Yeah, I'm there's no tired way. Because it's very late. Even people who hate the media on the right know this story is taken off. It, oh, well, we're never gonna, we're never gonna get to hell. Remains to be seen. Thank you to our specialists tonight, Jeannie Zeno and Juan Williams, and thank you all so much for watching the specialist uh, live edition tonight after dark. Make sure you follow us on social media, both Twitter and Facebook at Specialist FNC. Five o'clock or oh, eleven o'clock? Will that be the same? Also something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. <laughs>